Okay, let's keep going. And when we calculate the PO2 level, the 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 factor affect the PO2 level is the PO2 level in the air. And this represent your lung, this represent your blood. Your blood have plasma, that's the many water. So when they touch the the oxygen will diffuse to the to the water. So eventually PO2 level in the water equal to the PO2 level in the lung. So if the PO2 in the air is 100 millimeter mercury, uh, the PO2 in the in the water, of course, it's 100 millimeter mercury. However, this PO2 level does not tell you how many oxygen molecules you really have in the blood. This depends on the solubility. So even though the PO2 level in the blood is 100 millimeter mercury, it turns out oxygen does not dissolve in water pretty well. And you don't have too many oxygen molecules in the blood. And this, this will be enough for fish, but this won't be enough for human. Compared with the other gas molecule, CO2, CO2 actually have a better solubility compared with oxygen. So the same situation, if you have a 100 millimeter mercury of CO2, it turns out you actually have more CO2 molecule dissolved in water. So when we talk about how the blood carry oxygen and CO2, actually more CO2 can dissolve in the plasma part, being carried by the plasma compared with oxygen. Oxygen mainly, mainly carried by red blood cell because its solubility is very, 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 very low in the blood, in the plasma part. Okay, so, well, this is the eye clicker. Of course, we don't do eye clicker. So anemia, if I ask you, the anemia happens in where? Uh, anemia is the blood, right? You don't have enough blood. So it's not the outside. It's not alveoli oxygen, everything after. It's not the plasma oxygen is this part, the total hemoglobin oxygen level and everything after that. So let's look at anemia. Uh, anemia is due to you don't have enough blood. You don't have enough vehicle because that's the, the red blood cell is the main vehicle to carry oxygen. Uh, you don't have enough vehicle can due to you don't have enough materials to create a red blood cell. You're short of iron and this and this one possibility. It can also happen to a uh, drug or uh, some toxic molecule. It damage the red blood cell and it can cause anemia. Or uh, sickle cell anemia, that's the gene defect. It turned the red blood cell into the, the sickle shape. And this kind of red blood cells can still can carry oxygen. So they, the, the patient with sickle cell anemia, they can survive but they have difficulty to send oxygen to the small capillary. So they are, they are short of oxygen when they exercise. Your oxygen, okay, they have, it go to your alveoli, and this will be PO2 in the alveoli is 100 millimeter, 100 millimeter mercury. It turned out in your blood is also 100 millimeter mercury. The, the pressure match. But how much oxygen can really be, be delivered by your blood? Well, it depends on the solubility of this molecule and depends on your red blood cell. And we can actually test how, how much red blood cell you have in your blood. We can do the hematocrit. So you, we take the blood sample and we put it into the centrifuge. Centrifuge is like a washing machine, it's going to spin. And after two minutes, you take it out. The heavy stuff will stay in the bottom and the light one stay above. You just take a ruler, you measure, okay, what's the total distance? And you measure this distance, you calculate the percentage. And healthy people have around 42 to 45% uh, blood cell. Blood cell is almost 99.9% .9 red blood cell. And 58% to 55% plasma. Plasma is many water. And your total oxygen level depends on the oxygen dissolved in plasma. That's this part. And not too much because oxygen does not dissolve in water pretty well. Plus oxygen bound with hemoglobin. And that's this part. So this is the main part to carry oxygen. And when you have more red blood cells, you can carry more. 
when you have less, there's anemia, and your body being compromised to to carry oxygen. So for the oxygen transport, it's mainly transported by red blood cell hemoglobin, over 98% hemoglobin. And the reason is oxygen dissolving water not so well dissolving water, less than 2% dissolving plasma. So over 98% they need to bind with hemoglobin. And when the red blood cell carry the oxygen to the tissue, okay, it would dissociate and the oxygen can, can be sent to the tissue. And this slides tell you, okay, you have blood, you have alveoli, and the PO2 level match the PO2 in the in the uh, in the blood. So the PO2 level in the blood is 100 millimeter mercury. And when we do the calculation, we found in the plasma part because oxygen dissolves in, in water badly, and it it just does not dissolve in water pretty well. So it turned out only have three mil of oxygen per liter of blood. And when you add red blood cell, you have about 197 mil of oxygen carried by blood. So totally 200 mil of oxygen carried by blood. In all of them, over 98% is carried by oxygen. When you significantly, significantly drop the oxygen level to 28 millimeter mercury, this is pretty low. This is actually lower than normal. And you have about 0.8 mil of oxygen carried by plasma. You still have 99.5% mil of oxygen carried by your red blood cell. So totally 100 millimeter mercury. So no matter in what situation, the main way to carry oxygen is red blood cell. So these slides tell you the take home message is if you don't have red blood cell, it won't count. It won't work to carry oxygen. In unit one, when we talk about osmolarity, when you lose blood, you can theoretically you can replace your your blood with normal saline because it's it's isotonic. It won't make your cells swell, make your cells shrink. It can restore blood pressure, but you face a big problem if you replace the loose blood with normal saline, which is the oxygen carryability. Most of the oxygen is carried by red blood cell, not by plasma. So if you replace the lost blood with normal saline, theoretic, theoretically it will work, but actually it won't work because you, you, you need red blood cell to carry oxygen. So you still need to replace the lost blood with, with, with blood. And the amount of oxygen bound to uh, hemoglobin depends on first depends on how much plasma O2 you have. This decides the saturation rate. So each hemoglobin has four binding sites, and if they are 100% bind, there's four sites being bound, 100%. It can drop to 75, uh, 50, 25% if you only have three, two, or one oxygen bind with hemoglobin. And the second one is the total amount of hemoglobin, like your vehicle. Each vehicle can carry four passengers, and the total amount of vehicle, you have 100, 100 cars, and that's the total amount. If you have 120, they will increase this one. So the total amount of hemoglobin and will affect this. So you can calculate it by the uh, hemoglobin per red blood cell and number of red blood cells. Multiply these two together. Okay, let's talk about the interesting case. We all know this person, uh, the Lance Armstrong, and he did blood doping. And blood doping is you increase the number of red blood cells. So he ident he found he can do blood doping when he uh, when he was doing his chemotherapy, and his blood cell count decreased. And the doctor gave him EPO. EPO is a hormone to increase red blood, red blood cell. And he reached the aha moment. He found, oh, I can, actually I can do blood doping by uh, self-inject EPO. So blood doping, you self-inject EPO, it turned out this, this is a hormone your body naturally produces. And it's very difficult to, to, to identify blood doping by normal blood testing because it's a hormone you naturally have in your body. 
and he self-inject the hormone EPO and turn out his body have produced more red blood cell. So he significantly increased his oxygen carry ability not by doing anything in the muscle. So his muscle is clean, his urine is clean. He just have more red blood cell to carry oxygen to the tissue. And when exercise, when competition happens, he has more oxygen, more number of red blood cell to carry oxygen to his muscle. So his muscle performance is better. And that's blood doping. And this slide shows you your hemoglobin. So hemoglobin has four binding sites, and they are iron. These are iron. So if you're short of iron, uh, you have anemia. And each one can bind one oxygen. And the, each red blood cell have millions of hemoglobin molecule. And you have trillions of red blood cell in your body. Okay, let's take a break. <laughs> 